In this box, I have the cheapest configuration of the new Alienware, which should be hilarious because, you know, it's a Dell product. Uh, actually, funnily enough, it is a new box, which I find a bit of a weird move, considering that, if anything, the box was the best part of the previous generation. So I feel like they could have spent their R&D efforts elsewhere. But before we get into the fancy new box, I do need to tell you about how Dell has already done me dirty and I haven't even looked at the PC yet. Now, I placed the order for this PC back on November 2nd, when I first found it listed for sale on Dell's website. And I got two order confirmation emails saying that we should expect the system in the beginning of December. So I started waiting, occasionally checking Dell's order update website, which just kept saying that the order was about to enter production. And this didn't change for a month, at which point we were like, this, this is a bit dodgy. So Anna reached out to Dell's customer support, who after a bit of back and forth said, Oh, uh, that order that you paid for and you wanted, uh, we cancelled it accidentally. And because of our needlessly complicated tracking order system, uh, we didn't realize. So, whoops. And uh, at this point, our only course of action was to replace the order. They did say that they'd try and expedite it, but th they couldn't. That didn't really happen. So we ended up getting the system a month after we were initially supposed to get it. And if we didn't follow up, we still wouldn't have it. So... Yeah, that's good. Good job on that one, Dell. Uh, hopefully, the PC makes up for it, though. So with that, let's get into the fancy new box. And here we have our very exciting new box that looks like it was involved in the Korean War. Ooh, I take it back, that is better. Dell really does some good box work. You can even like fold this bit down and then you can more easily get the very heavy PC out without destroying your back. And then... It actually comes without e-waste peripherals as standard and you can spec them on the website if you want to. You do have to pay a bit extra, but I think that that's a nice touch because not everybody uses those terrible peripherals, so yeah, it's pretty good. Look at that bulbous ass. And there it is. Um, it does still look a little bit like a robot vagina to me, but you know, this one has some, some plastic in the front of the, the bit. Uh, which doesn't seem super promising for airflow. There is a gap around the edge, uh, but then you've got a whole bunch of aesthetic plastic back there. Although you can actually see through the front ventilation into the case, which is definitely better than before. So I'm curious to see the temperatures. In standard Alienware fashion, it does have a very good front I.O. You've got three USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports and a 3.2 Gen 2 type C port. So that's that's useful. It's very good. Now around the back, we've got this mesh honeycomb back here with just a little bit of airflow. And then we have these little plastic wings, which I guess do look alien-y if you have a really boring idea of what alien-y things look like. But it does have a similar problem to the previous generation where all of the plastics feel pretty bad and flexible and there's a bunch of panel gaps and stuff everywhere. It doesn't seem super well made for something that's advertised as being a very premium product. Although if you go down to the rear IO, it's actually pretty good. You've got enough connectivity over here. And then we've got the graphics card down here, which uh, that, that's a big problem. We'll get to that a bit later. Ooh, there's so much plastic on these systems. Oh. Um, okay, well, let, let, let's be nice. Let's start off with the positive changes. First off, they moved the power supply from this stupid position over here, where it was consensually choking out the CPU fan cooler, to down here, where it's now consensually choking out the graphics card fans. Uh, but that's definitely a positive improvement. And actually, while talking about the cooler, it does seem like they've started using the chunkier version of the Hobo Garbage Cooler. It, it's the same version that HP uses, so that's that's good. We, we should get some better temperatures on that CPU. 
But other than that, we have a whole laundry list of generic OEM pre-built gaming system problems. Uh, the motherboard and the power supply are all uh, proprietary shapes, which means despite the fact that you have better access to everything, you can't really upgrade much in this system because of that. Uh, you've also got the age-old pre-built Cardinal Sin, which is a single channel RAM configuration with a Ryzen CPU, which is <laughs> always a great time. Uh, the CPU under there is a Ryzen 5 5600X, which is a very good CPU that's had both its kneecaps blown out. Uh, we'll try and fix up this configuration later in this video to see if you can actually spec up a decent Alienware system, but we'll get to that later. Uh, we still need to mention the, the biggest problem with this system, which is the graphics card that we have in here. Now, just to put it into context, I paid about $100 more for this system than I paid for the previous cheapest Alienware system I bought about a year ago, and that had an RX 5700 in it. Whereas this system has, well, it's got an RX 5300 in it, which is an OEM graphics card that I've never tested before. So I'm very excited to see what kind of performance we can get out of this system. Oh yeah, and I actually forgot to mention the specs of the power supply. Under here, we have a 460 watt 80 plus bronze rated unit, and then you can upgrade to a 760 watt power supply. It is a really dumb shape, so you're not gonna be able to upgrade the power supply yourself after you've bought the system. So that's, that's pretty irritating. Uh, and it also, uses weird connectors for all of the motherboard power and stuff. And around the front, we've got an intake fan with what looks like okay, reasonable airflow. So yeah, the temperatures should actually not be that horrendous. But with that, let's pop the side panel back on, fire it up and see what kind of venereal bloatware the system comes with. That really is one of Dell's specialties. So yeah, let's check it out. Ooh, it's got Windows 11 on it. Okay, so in terms of VD, it's also definitely an improvement. We do have a bunch of Alienware crap on here. But other than that, it, it seems pretty standard. We don't even have McAfee on here pre-installed, which is kind of mind-blowing, to be honest. Now we're gonna start off with GTA 5 here because I'm actually not sure how that RX 5300 performs. Uh, so we're running at 1080p low settings or like normal settings. Um, so yeah, let, let's see what happens. Oh, never mind. let's bump it all up to high. I mean, I, I guess it's a bit better than I was expecting here with 1080p high settings. We're getting a, 100 frames per second and it, it feels nice and smooth and it looks pretty good. It's actually better than I was expecting, which does tell you a lot about my expectations for the performance of this system. Um, yeah, let, let's move over to something a bit more demanding. Next, we have Doom Eternal running at 1080p Ultra settings, which is the settings I usually use to test the game. Oh, there is a lot of input lag here. Okay, not what I'd call an ideal Doom Eternal experience. It's borderline unplayable just because of that input lag. It feels like you're wading through McDonald's honey mustard dip. Next up, we're trying out uh, Battlefield 5 with 1080p high settings, which may be a little bit brave. Now, I actually went back and got some benchmarks for the previous cheapest Alienware system I looked at, and they're actually running pretty similarly, which is quite surprising considering the massive discrepancy in GPU power. But that's probably because of the heinous war crime of a RAM configuration in both of these systems. And then in terms of CPU temperatures, despite the new system drawing a bit more power, it is actually running cooler and quieter, which isn't really difficult considering the old system was essentially a jet turbine. But with that, let's test out another Achilles heel of OEM gaming pre-builds, which is third-party memory support and upgradability. I am genuinely shocked by this result because this Alienware is the first OEM pre-built I have ever tested that has decent third-party memory support. Because not only can in some situations it read XMP profiles, but when it can't read the XMP profiles on the memory kit, you can manually set the frequency to the kit's rating and you can set the timings as well. I tested five different kits from four different manufacturers at, at varying speeds and the HyperX kit just 
by default set to its max speed of 3600 megahertz and it worked which is genuinely shocking with the kits from the other manufacturers they just auto set to the base ddr4 speed which is 2133 or 2400 megahertz however you could manually set the kits to their rated speed and it actually worked if just two weeks ago you came to me and said, David, the first ever OEM pre-built that you're gonna test with decent memory support is an Alienware system, I would have smacked you across the face and told you to lay off the meth, you dumbass. Because that would never happen, but it has, and I am shocked. <laughs> And not only that, but obviously, the better memory configuration makes a big performance difference. With Battlefield 5, you go from an average of 60 frames per second to an average of 70 frames per second. So now that we've fixed the cardinal sin memory configuration, the main bottleneck in the system is definitely that sad little RX 5300. So let's drop in a more powerful graphics card to see what happens with the CPU temperatures when it has to keep up with a more reasonable GPU pairing. Now, unfortunately, because we have that misshaped little 460 watt power supply in here, we're not gonna be able to go too ham in terms of graphics card upgrades. So I'm gonna use this RX 6600 XT Hellhound. With the RX 6600 XT in there, we can see the frame rate is obviously way higher because it's much better than that RX 5300. The frame pacing is a little bit dodgy, but it is Battlefield, it can get a bit stuttery, and it did feel fine, uh, although the graphics card temperatures are also reasonably high. Uh, but another thing that we can also see is that the CPU temperatures are higher because, well, it's having to work harder to keep up with that graphics card. It has become clear just from the amount of extra noise that the CPU fan is making that Dell really wants to keep the CPU under that 70 degrees Celsius barrier. Now I think the next step is definitely to replace that hobo garbage cooler with a 120mm AIO, something representative of the AIO that you can spec up on Dell's website to see what kind of temperatures and noise we get with that. And I have just the AIO to use. Now I'm not entirely sure what the official Dell way is to mount the AIO on the back here because you have this bracket. It, it doesn't seem like it has space for the actual AIO tubing and stuff. So I think I'm just gonna remove the bracket completely, ignore it, and then just mount the AIO straight to the back of the case. Oh, that's really irritating. They use much smaller mounting holes here uh, so that you can't mount a 120 millimeter AIO on the back without some form of bracket. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the fan in a pool configuration and then just mount the AIO uh, radiator on the front of it like here and then mount it on. Okay, they actually do just screw on, so that's good. Um, I am using the Intel mounting here, which is pretty weird with an AMD CPU, but you know, if it works, it works. A few moments later. No way. What? Is this LGA 1700 spacing? It is. Ah, uh, so what Dell has done there is they've taken the new Intel LGA 1700 mounting and they've put it on an AMD CPU. The only reason why I could think they'd do that is so that they don't have to change the tooling between the Intel and the AMD case and so that they can use the same cooler on both systems. B basically what all of this means is that a cooler upgrade is out of the question for this video because I don't have any coolers that'll mount to it now. Although if you do buy an NZXT AIO or Pretty much any AIO that uses like the standard Acetec mounting screws, uh, you can mount it to the system if you get the LGA 1700 upgrade kit, uh, which you can get from some of these companies. So bear that in mind, the option is there. You just need to jump through a bunch of hoops because Dell, I guess, I don't know. So after all of that, what have we learned about the new Alienware? 
uh, well, it, it's definitely better than the old Alienware, which, to be fair, isn't, isn't a very high bar to clear, considering that the old Alienware was essentially just a bear suffering from leprosy that was role-playing as a jet engine. Whereas this is like a bear suffering from mild leprosy that's no longer role-playing as a jet engine. This spec, this cheapest spec, is, is pretty dumb and you shouldn't buy it. This PC cost $1,250, which considering what's in there is a lot of money. Like for an RX 5300, that's a lot. And when you start specking it up to a point that makes sense with like, for example, an RTX 3060 in it and still the 5600X, but like a dual channel 16 gig kit of RAM and the AIO and a better power supply and stuff, you're looking at $2,000, which is a lot for specs that you can get for like $400 less. Pricing is a really fickle thing to discuss at the moment because it does change all the time but the system is very expensive and it, it, it's really difficult to recommend because it still has a whole bunch of standard OEM problems because you know, I guess OEM pre-builds got a OEM pre-built, you know, they, they do have, they do have a bunch of weird issues with them. And this one is definitely not an exception. Although Dell does often have things go on sale. So in a couple of months, the systems will probably be quite a bit cheaper. Uh, although, yeah, I don't know. You, you can decide for yourself if you think it's worth it. And with that, it brings me to the end of another video. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. And yeah, until the next video, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.